Hey folks, Neighbor Al here. Uh, it's a brisk November day here at Happy Dog Farm in Major Metropolitan, Russell, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm working on the barn shop and I kind of wanted to show you what I've gotten done so far uh, because a lot, a lot of the work is, is going to never be seen again. It's going to be under concrete. So it seemed kind of important to um, capture all of this for anybody who's considering making um, a similar effort. I might be doing overdoing it, but I don't think I'm going to regret it. Um, Dottie's shop next to mine um, has a lot of the same features, and her floor is doing really, really well. And that's kind of where I want to go. So I'm going to talk, and we're going to share some of this, and let you know what's going on. First and foremost, um, Greg came by the morning before I left for cider day and poured the curbs. Now I have raised curbs around the perimeter of the shop and the purpose of that is so that the sill plate is well above. It's going to be two and a half inches above the grade of the floor and then there'll be a waterproof material over the wall so that when I'm washing walls and I'm cleaning the floor moisture can't get under the sill plate um, and especially if there's cider in it it's not going to rot, it's not going to cause problems. Also these curbs go down deep enough that there is no chance in heck of vermin um, going under the walls. Uh, it's a barn, you know, and there, I displaced a bunch of little guys gals. Um, so we've got that going for it too. There's insulation, on, there's one inch of foam insulation around the perimeter on the outside of the curb and I've added an inch of insulation on the inside of the curb and again there's a lot of ground heat available around here um, and the floor is going to have its own thermal mass which is kind of nice. I don't want the floor to sweat from cold and um, and I want it to kind of be its own thermal thing. So certainly wanted to keep the cold from creeping in, but also cold from, you know, warm cold from below. So there'll be more insulation underneath it, which I'll show you when I get to that stage in the project. Um, the curbs are wider than you would think, and the purpose for that is so that when I put the sill plate out there, I get more room behind the curb for insulation. I really want to put more insulation um, on, all the, on all the faces of the barn if possible because this likely could, you know, if success actually does smack me upside the head, I might need, have more use for a walk-in cooler than a place for cider. I might process someplace else or simply allow my fruit to have secure storage away from vermin in here and that would be really sweet. So it might be, think of it as an above ground root cellar. Um, you know, I could let the cold air in but keep the critters out. So uh, all the digging is done. You know, I dug all my dirt out. That's a good thing. Uh, and I was in here last night until I ran out of propane in the heater for the first shot. <laughs> it was cold. Um, putting in the drains. Uh, pitching them, pos positioning them, supporting them, leveling them, pitching them so that all the drainage goes into the sump well. And I'm using three inch pipe which might look a little large um, but the truth be told there's going to be a fair amount of capacity in the pipe as well as in the sump well because I'm going in the lower um, the lower hole in the sump well. So I had to put my capacity, so there's a little bit of capacity in the pipe. Uh, I'm not worried about it. Um, and the discharge pipe uh, was put in before they poured the curbs because obviously it goes under the curb. So um, I'm going to show you a few pictures and then I'll talk about a few other things. Okay. Oh, my camera. There we go. Here's what's going on. Now, for a moment, this little section right here, this is obviously the grade of the barn floor. The curb is above it, but I'm going to start have the floor a half inch below that. 
So what I'll get is a two and a half inches that my sill plate will be above the grade of the floor. And that should definitely keep moisture from traveling underneath here. But also I thought about it, the half inch here, just that little lip, that's also to keep water from going out when I'm washing and making mud. I don't want that. So I decided to give myself a half inch clearance here and I'll probably put steel or something on that edge to protect it. I haven't decided yet. Here's the foam. Now you'll notice the foam is really well, it's about four inches below. There'll be a six inch pour. Okay. Six inch pour. And this foam is really keeping the cold that's getting transmitted through the bottom of this out of the floor. Okay, so I'm trying to look at the camera and point at the same time. Sorry. So, lots of foam all the way around. There will also be an inch of foam on top of the gravel pour right here. You know, so there'll be more foam and you'll see it later. The sump pits here, and I think you can see in there, it's a little dark. There's the, the, the pipe, the drain pipe going in. And what I did was I cut off the fittings from a piece of pipe, cut it in half, and I glued those rings on so I could not push or pull the pipe. It's, so it's secure in here, and I'm not worried about it leaking, but I'm also worried that as I did all my machinations, it couldn't come loose, and that really helped a lot, believe me, later on. I have two drain vents. Now, you know, this looks like, holy crap, they're just sticking up. I'm standing a foot below grade. Th these things will be buried in concrete up to here. So they're not going anywhere. Once the concrete's poured, I will cut the pipe and put on the clean out in the top cap so that, you know, and that's where a drain would go into. The trench drains, I've never done anything like this before, but it comes up to read the instructions. Um, there's lots of rebar holding them in place. If you, if, you, if you think that this is the level of the floor, you know, you, get a, you do get a sense of you're quite a ways above the, um, the grade of the floor. And that's because there's going to be, this is probably, there's going to be a, a leveling bed of gravel in here. I'll just call it a leveling bed. But when I talk about the six inches of concrete, I'm going to be pushing concrete up underneath these, and these will be surrounded by concrete to hold them in place. Today, I'll be mixing concrete in my generously lent, well, I borrowed from a neighbor, portable mixer, and pushing concrete up underneath each one of these all the way along to give them that, that support. So when you put a heavy weight on them, there's actually something underneath them that's on a par with the rest of the floor. Um, these drain from the center. They're all very slightly pitched to the center drain. From the center drain, there's that little collector there, here, and here. Ventilation's not a big deal, obviously. This is wide open. This is a whole open thing. Um, so the chances that they're getting an air block in here are, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Nope. So, so far so good. There is a clean out on the discharge pipe. Really need that in case something gets in there and starts to plug it. Um, I'd probably use an air compressor or something and just try and blow it out. So the tools I use for this really came in handy. But what I'm pointing, well, obviously a, um, a shovel, <laughs> a, an iron rake really comes in handy. There's the iron rake. This was serendipity. This piece of steel here if you look closely, it's actually double-sided, so it's, it's very stiff, and that has proven really useful as a scree and a very long level bar. That's the old tracking bar from a garage door opener.
And I said, you know, this looks like it's going to come in handy. Oh, I was so right. It really has come in fantastically handy, especially for before the plumbing stuff went in, dragging across the floor to look for high spots. It worked really, really well. The laser level and that little detector, the laser level is a Harbor Freight. It's um, good enough. It doesn't have to be terribly bright because I got at clearance at Lowe's a detector. And the detector really makes all the difference in the world because you don't have to see it, but it will give you an audio tone of are you off or on target and up down arrows to let you sense, you know, pull it up, pull it down. So it's it's proven well. You can see that I have tick marks for where the floor is, where the aisle level is. And I can walk this around relative to the laser height. That's the thing. The laser has to stay where it is. And I just, I just put it down on that surface and aim. And it tells me, is this above or below whatever I selected on my cheap piece of wood, my 1x2 stock. So these two have proven to be a really good pair. Another tool that came in really handy, well... Having wire cutters, the brass hammer, and the spinner with the annealed wire for positioning the drains. Uh, I couldn't have done it without it. I needed all that. I used some clamps, and the clamps I used to pull these things together and then put another layer of wire underneath so that the, the drains were snug together as well as they were snug vertically in position. That helped a lot. This is a portable bandsaw, which I happen to own. Really comes in handy for cutting clean, fast cuts on 3-inch PVC. I think I could have done up to 4 inches. Um, this is really nice. Just hold it, and it just dropped right through. Uh, really a helpful tool to have, maybe borrow it. Otherwise, you need a solution that's good at cutting larger PVC because the little hand ones that you ratchet aren't going to cut it. The other tool that came in handy was my cutoff tool because I was using two foot lengths of rebar and every now and then cutting them down to one foot. And a cutoff tool, you know, I just whack through four of them fast. You're not going to do that with a hacksaw. It's just not going to work. You could do it with that, the orbital, the band, the portable bandsaw, but not going to work so well, really, because um, you have to have a vise and hold it in place and yada, 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 yada. This was put your foot on it, put your earmuffs on, make a lot of loud noise, and it goes away. Obviously, a hoe for moving dirt around. A trenching shovel is really nice. For clearing a path underneath the um, the drain pipe, helpful, very helpful. And given it was barely breaking 40 in here last night, yeah, that's a fresh tank. It was cold. It doesn't heat up the room so much as it just keeps you warm if you aim it at you. So that was nice. You can see my pink spool of string down there. That was very helpful for centering up these drains, just to put a snap line right above it and line things up when I was driving the um, rebar in to hold it in place. You, I use a brass hammer because I have one. It's spark free, but you'll need a maul or something, uh, a regular, even a ball and peen isn't good enough. You, you need a good heavy hand hammer for driving this rebar and you want a good foot of material in the ground. Um, I'm just saying, okay, once the concrete's in, it's not going anywhere, anywhere, period. Uh, that's where I was digging with the uh, trench shovel just to make sure I had a nice clean shot. I'll probably pack that clay back in. I don't need concrete under that. I will pour concrete underneath that little three-way there just as support because it's in the midway. But you can see I've already wired it in place with rebar again. The rebar in those six inches pieces, it's just enough to hold it steady. 
And a lesson learned with that annealed wire is you really want to kind of like double it up because it, it's easy enough to part it. It does break. So, you know, same thing here. A good level, especially with the top window. This one's upside down. Put a good level with the top window. It's really nice for just checking the um, level on your drains and whatnot. You just want to make sure you have pitch. If you're not measuring, you know, a quarter inch per foot or whatnot, you just want to make sure you got pitch at least one degree, maybe two degrees of pitch. And you can usually tell that off of the scale on a level. So that's pretty handy. Sure, the glue, um, glue and primer. You know, you, you got to know how to work with the PVC. Uh, check your can of glue before you get to work because my other can gelled up air got to it so I had to go get it I had to get a different can which I already had so that's useful what else oh I'm sure I'll think of something but that's it in a nutshell so far there is oh and I have my handy barn lantern there uh, if not just for light it's for uh, warmth so that's my older than me lantern that I got at an auction and it belongs there uh, the lights that are in here are low temperature starting lights down to zero. And it takes them a while to warm up, but they start up right away. And it's huge because it would have been very, very dark in here. Before I put those in, you can just make out that piece of wire. It's a stainless wire. And that's where I used to hang a lantern up in here just to get some light in here. But, you know, it's, they're great, but they're not enough. So you want some lighting. I'll have to, when the floor's done, I'll bring a scaffolding in and the whole overhead's gonna get redone again with that wiring and stuff. Um, I want more insulation up there. I don't need such a high ceiling, but I need more insulation up there. And like what I did with uh, Dottie's room, I need to put cat and bird guards in to keep them from roosting or trying to get into the insulation. That gizmo you see in the corner, that's a wireless link to the house. So, yeah, I'm a geek. We have internet in the barn. That thing, it's, um, I can't, Ubiquity? I can't remember the name of it. I totally can't see it either. And this camera, if I, I'm going to try and zoom. I can't read the brand name on it, but it's been working great, and it was selected because unlike a lot of others, it dealt with the cold very well, and that's a, just a clean Yagi antenna that nobody's perched on. That'll probably get physically moved down so it still stays accessible. The access point's in Dottie's shop because that's a consumer thing, and it needs to be kept fairly warm. can't think of anything else. So that's where I'm at today. Uh, I'm waiting for it to warm up a little bit. I need water to make concrete. Um, the hoses were frozen. I didn't drain them. I mean drain drain them before I left for cider days and the temperature dropped into the low 20s. Bad. So they spent the day out um, in partial sun yesterday draining. And if I make concrete today, um, I still have to clean up. And that means draining and everything else to, to get the, the mixer cleaned out so I can return it. So I'll be cleaning up the floor, moving dirt, and if it warms up enough this afternoon, I'll be uh, pouring concrete. If it doesn't warm up enough this afternoon, then Sunday I'll be pouring concrete and um, Monday or Tuesday quickly doing the other stuff. I'm, I, I fully expect I'll get my concrete poured today. It's just a little awkward knowing I have to clean up. So, there you have it. That's what you wanted to know. And I look forward to sharing with you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.